If you're not already subscribed to this YouTube channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button now, along with the bell icon so you can be notified whenever a new video is posted. And if you're already subscribed, check and make sure that YouTube hasn't unsubscribed you. And of course, be sure to give the video a like as well as share it on your social media. The white supremacists hate that. And now, the Sunday Address. As New Black Media Appreciation Month storms on, we want to make sure that we give credit to you, the real core of the new black media, and the work that you've put in. Mainly because the entire reason that we do what we do is that we are fighting for eyeballs, but not just any eyeballs. Yours. Why? Because you're the ones who are actually going to be making trouble for white supremacy, and it's important that we make sure we keep you focused. The white media certainly works on grabbing your eyeballs, but they're not the only ones. They've got a bunch of bootlick adjacents who are also fighting for the exact same thing. But not to empower you, rather to ingratiate themselves. It's very important that you make sure that you not give your attention to people who are only out for their own enrichment, and as far as they're concerned, they're just going to use the black community as nothing more than a stepping stone to greater wealth and power for themselves. This is a lesson that should have been learned in the 1960s, but too many of the black baby boomers, not all before people in the comments get started, but too many of them did go along with this nonsense of following after some of these suck-ups. That's how we got stuck with people like John Lewis, and later on John Conyers, and later on the rest of these bootlicks in politics who haven't done anything for us. Too many folks in the civil rights movement figured out that they could use the black community as a springboard to a life of comfort and wealth for themselves. And we've watched the same putrid pattern play itself out with Negroes who went into so-called media outlets and those who decided that they were going to become professional entertainers and athletes. Too many times those who talk about black advocacy go ahead and break bad on us, but the truth of the matter was they were never with us to begin with. A good or rather bad case study in this would be Byron Allen. Byron Allen is still filing lawsuits. That seems to be the primary thing that he does. Only these days it's not so much against white media companies as against McDonald's. I guess Mickey D's must have fumbled his order one too many times. In one of his lawsuits, he accused McDonald's of fraud. The basis for this was that during the height of the Black Lives Matters movement, McDonald's had put out a statement saying that they were going to increase their national ad spending with black-owned outlets. Byron Allen is, of course, all over this one. Far as he's concerned, McDonald's has not held up their part of the bargain. They're supposed to be spending more money with these black-owned outlets. But of course, when Byron Allen says black-owned outlets, what he's really meaning is they're not spending enough money with him. Now, before we go any farther, because we always have a couple of slow coasts who try to find a way to argue with the new voices of black media simply because they don't like the things that we say and because we perhaps turned one of their sacred cows to hamburger. See what I did there? I have no sympathy for McDonald's. And in all likelihood, Byron Allen is 110% right. At least the essential facts of what he's saying are essentially valid. But this is the litigation hustle that he's doing. And for a while now, even though he's constantly talking about how he's doing this for black people's benefit, the only one who ever gets anything out of his lawsuits is Byron Allen. And even that wouldn't be so obnoxious if it wasn't for the fact that he's constantly out here campaigning as if he's holding up the flag for all black people. If he just made it very clear, hey, I'm looking out for number one. This is about me. Y'all need to go ahead and throw some cash my way. That would be one thing. But for him to pretend as if he's sticking up for black people in general, that's the problem. And he's tried to see if he could recruit some phony black grassroots in order to prop him up. But we all know how that went. Remember years back when the A-Dunce movement was telling us all how Byron Allen's lawsuits against Comcast and other white media companies were vital for him to win? Because if he lost these suits, why? It was back to the plantations for us. Remember when they were saying that? They were trying to make it seem as if, oh, this was the last ditch. If we don't stick up for Byron Allen, why is it going to be curtains for us? Curtains, I tell you. That's what they were doing. Well, the issue was largely resolved out of court, and we haven't heard that line of rhetoric from Byron Allen or from them since. See, I suspect that what happened there was some people were thinking to themselves that because Byron Allen happens to have a couple of garbage-tier websites like The Grio, and because of the fact that he owns a couple of TV stations, apparently this meant that Byron Allen was going to be giving some people some employment if they got behind him. So that's why they were out there carrying water for this guy. Oh, and we got to stand in front of the Supreme Court building with him. You and the three or four friends who show up. That's what some folks were thinking was supposed to happen, and Byron Allen would reciprocate, or at least that's what they seem to think. But in the end, he left them high and dry. As usual, he was only looking out for himself. These people put their reputations, such as they were on the line for him, 
only for him to ghost them first chance he got. No TV deal for you. And now he's going after McDonald's. Again, if Byron Allen had a track record of helping other black people besides himself, or if he actually lived up to at least some of his rhetoric, that would be one thing. If he was honest about his looking out for number one mentality, that would be different, but he's not. He sues these big white companies, and I don't have any problem with him doing that. But after he gets some sort of settlement, he parlays that into some acquisition or other for himself, and then it's off to the next lawsuit. Well, his latest fraud lawsuit against McDonald's got thrown out by the court, but that's okay because Byron's got a second suit against Mickey D's going as well. So that's what he's on. But the point that I'm making is, we have to be very careful about people, even those who may pretend or otherwise seem as if they've come from the outside, the mainstream black media sphere, people who are claiming that they're talking for the black grassroots, but they get behind the wrong people. We could spend years trying to undo the damage from that, so it's very important that we nip these things in the bud early. There were a lot of people who thought, well, isn't Byron Allen basically right? Look, let me tell you something. When you got somebody who's trying to find a way to sweet talk you into supporting their agenda, if there's nothing in it for you whatsoever, what do you think they're going to say? Do you think they're going to come up to you and say, hey, this is all about me promoting myself into hell with you? There's a lot of things that you can do just simply as a human being when you make mistakes in messaging or you make some sort of error in how it is that you go about things. But the one thing that we can never do is to lie to you. We cannot claim that we are somehow out here for all black people when in reality, we're only out here for ourselves. We got to play it straight with you. And that's what makes the new voices of black media different. You see, this is what Byron Allen could never figure out. Oh, he's got money. He ain't a billionaire, by the way. He's about $700 million to be generous. But he never seemed to understand white power can give you a platform. It can give you money. It can give you a blonde wife. But what white power cannot give you is legitimacy. See, only the black grassroots can do that. But Byron Allen's not looking for legitimacy. As far as he's concerned, he's found a good substitute for it. And he's not the only one. He's just taking the same playbook that Bob Johnson pioneered back in the 80s and he's running with it. These individuals who are only too eager to misuse the term black as some sort of twisted brand name. Or these individuals who are thinking to themselves they're going to be slick and use black as some sort of calling card, a putrid, empty slogan. We can't have that. You see, over here, black actually means something. When you have somebody who's allegedly worth somewhere in the neighborhood of three quarters of a billion dollars, somebody who has a number of media outlets under his name, and yet this man, with all of those resources, cannot show you anything other than what he's done for himself. This guy has not done anything to promote or advance anyone other than himself. That says something. This is not somebody who is trying to use his money in order to promote black empowerment. This is why I keep telling you about all these white supremacists who put their money behind these so-called think tanks. Whenever you have these attacks on black people, whenever you have all of these outlets who are cheerleading for black people being murdered, and you have all of these Negroes who you see them on the white media, you see these people who are trying to jump in front of the cameras, and yet they are the main ones who make it a point that they're not going to be rocking the boat on that one. What we need are significant black resources being put behind directly countering the kind of anti-black propaganda that we get subjected to constantly. We don't need some self-promoting Negro doing interviews for the white media trying to be the big man. And every time that he mentions himself, the first words out of his mouth is how much money he's got or allegedly has. You should beware and make it a point to stay away from anybody who you see doing that. Whenever somebody makes it a point that they're always going to be telling you how great they are, bragging about what they claim that they've got, what that tells you is what's truly important to them. It's not about the group, it's about themselves. And that's somebody who will betray you at the drop of a hat, assuming they haven't already. Look, I don't care for Byron Allen, and I don't want anything from him. I don't have it in for him personally, though I do despise the self-serving duplicity that he represents. This is the guy who wants to resurrect the so-called Black News Channel. Yeah, because it did so much good for the black community during its short life. Well, if it goes anything like the griot, then we can count on him getting some white cable cast-offs to be his anchors, and he'll immediately be campaigning for immigration, feminism, transgender bathrooms, oh, and for us to prioritize the plight of the Palestinians, everything and everyone except for black people, because that's what Black News Channel did. Let's be clear here. 
Too many of these Negroes you see talking about building alleged black media outlets are actually just talking about finessing some white corporate advertiser money for themselves. That's the hustle. That's what Bob Johnson did back in the day, and I guess because it worked out well for him, there are a lot of other people looking to duplicate his formula. But it's not anything that's going to produce anything for black people as a group. We've had more than enough Negroes who have been out there in Hollywood and other places who have gotten more than enough resources where if they really wanted to push back against the white media's anti-black propaganda barrage, they could have done it a long time ago. The reason that they haven't done it is, at the end of the day, this is how they're going to be building up their own little money for themselves. To them, that's the game that they're playing. Well, it's a game that we should not be any part of. So that's the reason why I want to say thank you to the people for not giving your eyeballs to folks who talk about group advancement, but are only after producing personal advantage. If nothing else, the new voices of black media have made it a point that whenever we speak, it's never about what you guys need to be doing for us. We don't believe in using the people because that's exactly the kind of duplicitous cutthroat behavior that led us to the sorry state that we're in now, where we're all suspicious, we're all apprehensive. Tragically, this is not without warrant. It's actually come from occasionally bitter experience. But the goal here, the lesson should not be beware doing business with black people or beware listening to black people or following black people. You should listen to black people, follow black people support black people, but it's about being more careful about who you support. Don't just let somebody come up to you with a line or two that sounds good for a moment, and then here's the predictable pivot, the old bait and switch. The point of this evening address is not to focus on distrust, but rather to focus on discernment. If somebody's running around talking about black empowerment, but they have absolutely nothing to do with anybody at the black grassroots, I mean the real grassroots, not some pretend astroturf. If you got somebody who is not making it a point to constantly be combating and fighting against all of these well-moneyed anti-black white propaganda outlets, then this is not somebody who's looking out for you at all. This is not someone who deserves to be celebrated. This is someone who deserves to be separated. And that's where we are right now. We are separating the real from the phony. Because the real people who are actually out here making certain that the message is consistent, it's not individuals who are looking to lead you. That's having the game completely backwards. Where the new black media is concerned, we are the ones following you. You're the leaders. And we make it our point every day to focus on saying what it is that we know you want said. It's not about trying to get on the cover of Forbes magazine or trying to get the white media to say, oh, this person's a media mogul. It's about whether or not there are more black people who are empowered at the end of our process than there were at the beginning. More black people who are actually in a position to combat the forces of anti-black racism against us and to foster a culture of fighting these forces of white supremacy, as opposed to focusing only on whether or not you can get invited to the latest exclusive party on the cheese and croissant circuit up in Beverly Hills. I'm sure I speak for all the new voices of black media when I say, in the words of the late great Paul Mooney, we're not Hollywood, we're neighborhood. Good evening. And be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Frederica Moore, Samuel Divers, Elaine Zanga Zanga, Otis Pimpleton, and Mark Brown. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black empowerment only exists because of you.